Well, hi everybody, it's Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm an artist and paper crafter, and today I'm gonna to show you some Copic coloring of winter white flowers. I'm calling them winter white because it's winter right now, but you can use this technique any time of year. I'm gonna use this Concord and Ninth stamp set with, I love the way that they've written the word lovely. It's so pretty. And I love when they're mix, mix and matched with regular words. So the word hello being a very straight font and the lovely being a script was a really pretty combination. And I'm doing this on some Nina cardstock. And I'm just using all of my really light E markers because I want to keep this a very light and, and like I said, winter white. And so I'm starting with my very, very lightest on this main focal point flower. The stamp set itself has stamps that you would just use as stamps to color inside the flower, but you know, me and my markers love to do that. I'm softening out some of that color using the colorless blender because that's going to just erase and soften some of those edges. And as it dries, that grayness will go away. And then I'm going to go in with some other E colors. This is one of the darkest colors that I'll be using on this. I'll add a little bit more pop with something else. But I wanted to really make that center a focal point and drop in some super dark in the very, very middle, but then start adding a little bit more color over top of them. The whole thing is stamped in a tan color that I actually stamped off first so that I didn't get very much ink down because I didn't want much of the ink to show. This is sort of no line coloring, but not completely uh, because I left enough of that color there that you can definitely tell there is a stamp, but I didn't want that to be fighting with the words, hello, lovely, lovely. And even that area at the bottom, when I stamped it, I dabbed off a little bit with a paper towel before stamping it so that that would be really light. I don't want to interfere with those words. I just want the flowers to interact with them. The rest of the coloring outside of this main focal point flower is going to be creating negative space in which the flower sits. And when you're coloring something that's white, it looks white in comparison to whatever is around it. So for right now, that flower looks like it's got a bunch of tan in it. So we want to add more colors around it. So all of the leaf shapes, I'm going to add a couple different E colors and little tan colors to create some solid shapes and some darker shapes against which this flower is going to look whiter and whiter as I get the card done. And I'm also going to let, when I, when I do the sections down at the very bottom, I'm going to let those remain really light colors. It's a great thing about coloring is you can control when it gets dark and when it gets heavier. So I'm using a lot of E3s and E4s mostly on this. Those are those tend to be a little more on the neutral types of colors. The, the E3s can be a little bit on the reddish side and the E1s, or I should say the E0s and the E1s and the E2s can be a little on the yellowish side. So I went, went for the E4s, which are a little more on the neutral and adding in occasionally a little bit of E3 just to add a little bit of warmth to it and allow some of that color to, to add that contrast on the, the card itself. Now on some of these leaves I'm using my, uh, my dark color first and some of them I'm using the light color first. When you're doing things that are this super light it doesn't matter a whole lot. A lot of times with my coloring I always start with that base coat. Not necessarily a rule that you have to follow every single time sometimes on something like this it just feels right to try to get some color thrown in here to start creating that contrast and here I'm going to add a little bit of contrast on the leaves just to get a little bit of detail in there without a whole lot in order to get very thin lines like that you want to hold your marker maybe more vertically than you normally do because a lot of people I know struggle with getting very fine lines and fine strokes uh, but holding it more vertically can help and then I'm just barely touching the tip down to the paper when I get that really fine line. So you want to practice getting that really soft touch with your markers instead of always giving it a little more on the, the color side and a little more pressure. So you can start to see now some of those negative shapes appearing where those around where those leaves are. There's some of those flowers that are starting to now look like they're on top. And that's what we want to start seeing as this whole thing starts to develop. Just add more color underneath of each one of the, the flowers. And here's a leaf that I had forgotten. It didn't get stamped very well. So 
you go back and catch that one now you can start to see that white flower in the center is starting to really pop even more so I'm going to go in and add a little more darkness underneath of it now one thing to be careful of when you're trying to add that darkness underneath of something is not to add it as if it were a line don't outline that flower unless you outline it in a very very light color because the thing that's going to create the realism is that the darkness will start and stop around each one of those shapes it's not a line you're not outlining the stamp you're creating shapes underneath of it now you just want to give those color those shapes their natural colors their natural light to darkness of their own their natural shading rather than trying to make it look like you're you're just actually outlining an object and you'll you'll notice that more and more just watch how some of those colors come and go if you look in the that perhaps that top right section that I'm working on right now as it goes toward that flower in the center there are areas where the white against that tan just stops and then it, it shows up against dark and or, or white in the background and that's kind of what I'm talking about is trying to create those areas where there's only part of it that has a color behind it not all of it and I'm not even sure if I'm explaining all this right there's some of these concepts if I find it really difficult to do voiceovers on because it just doesn't it's not just not something that I can explain very well there was a concept that I I stumbled on online that talked about how there are some people that overestimate what they think they know and I think there are some of us that do that and then there's other us others of us who do know what we're doing it's just we assume that everybody understands what we're doing and how we're explaining it and I, I feel like that's my fault sometimes because I, I just assume that everybody understands what I'm seeing because it's really hard to explain it and and if I do that sometimes I apologize for not being able to articulate in quite the right way it's just something my eye naturally sees so now we're into adding a lot more dark areas this e44 even though it's not a dark color it's looking dark in comparison to some of this and i'm going to pick a few strategic areas to add that darkness so you can see if you go around the edge of that white flower that center white flower sometimes it's against that e44 sometimes it's against a lighter color and i'm going to start carrying out some of that color that dark color from that white flower out underneath of some of the other flowers so that that center point is really a radiator that all of those colors come out of and it's going to add more to pull that flower into the center and pull that into the middle of the picture and you'll have to leave me in comments down below if you have better descriptions for what i'm talking about if there's things that you're seeing as this develops that could be used as better explanations in the future for this. Now those little white flowers with many petals, um, I decided to leave all the flowers white, but the ones with the white petals have more detail around them. So it's a little easier to, to get a little bit of that detail on one side. But notice that I'm not putting that same dark color around all sides of it. That's kind of what I'm trying to explain is that there are parts of them that will have darker shadows on one side than the other and you just want to balance that out kind of carefully so that the whole thing works out in the long run what you're hoping for now this little flower down here I wanted to create some distance between it and the flower in front of it and then down here at the bottom as well but I'm careful not to add too much really dark color down over the hello lovely I don't want that to start to visually fight and now I'm going to go in with some very dark. This E49 is the darkest brown out of all the Copic browns. And I'm going to go into just those little center areas and I'm making just tiny, tiny marks and also adding a little bit into the centers of each of my flowers. That's going to draw more attention to each one of them as well as adding that, that depth. And now I'll go right alongside where I put all those dark areas with my E44 to soften some of that out and give it a little more a little more oomph and pull that color out a little further to make it look like it's not just a, a dark spot underneath of there drag some of it into the center of the flower if I can 
and then go around each one of those centers because I don't want them to have really harsh black centers necessarily. So I'm going to soften that out just a little bit more. And then comes La Pièce de la Résistance, which is my white Signo pen. You guys probably know by now how much I love my white pen to add a lot of detail. And when I'm adding it over these dark centers, look how much that white pops. It just really leaps out that way because it's got some contrast. Contrast is key to making anything pop on a card or a finished piece of art or whatever you're coloring. So make sure you have lots of contrast there. Now the stamp set has a bunch of these dots all over the place. It's more like they had done the drawing maybe in pen and ink and just left all these the spritz of dots all over. And I started going around with my E44, probably not the smartest move, because then it started looking like I had these weird polka dots all over the place. And that led me to something else, which I thought worked out really cool in the long run, was to add a white dot inside each one of those, and they almost look like these kind of really delicate bubbles now. So don't let yourself think that you've ruined something just by having made some dots in places they shouldn't be. Just try something else on top of it and see what happens. Now, one layer cards, you do end up with some color behind them. So all I did was put my layer, a layer of blank paper on the inside of the card, and that leaves the whole card itself as a one layer card. I just added the extra inside to cover the inside back. So this card came out really pretty. I hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And I'd love to invite you to subscribe if you have not yet. Just click on my little face right there. I put out about three videos a week and would love to share more with you. There's also a couple other suggested videos as well as the Copic Jumpstart class. If you haven't taken that, that might be of interest to you if you want to learn more about your markers. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.